checking. Checking. Yeah. We're good. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to take a moment and welcome Archbishop Vino, who is here with us this morning. Always a pleasure to have you here, Archbishop, and, and thanks so much for coming. Second of all, for the first time in 16 and a half months, we have a pre-mass announcement, and that pre-mass announcement is that you no longer need to call and sign up for Mass. Effective next week, you can just show up. <laughs> Our gathering hymn is All Are Welcome, found on page three of your parish hymnal, and we'll sing verses one, two, and three. Let us build a house where love can dwell, and all can safely and words are strong 
the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning. Thank you, Mark, for your words of uh, welcome. I was here twice within two months, so I figured there were too many complaints after the first time, so that Father Phil risked to ask me again. But I'm very pleased to be here with you this morning to celebrate the Eucharist. Last January, uh, Pope Francis instituted the first uh, World Day for grandparents and the elderly. And that World Day will take place every year on the last uh, Sunday of July, just before the Feast of St. Joachim and St. Anne. So we're invited not to forget our grandparents and elderly persons because of their wisdom and also to cherish them as being essential members of the church and society. Uh, today's reading will, as usual, give some directions on how to live, strive for humility and patience, and also trust that the Lord will sustain us. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You promised to feed us all our days. Lord, have mercy. You are our hope and our salvation. Christ, have mercy. Your abundant love is eternal. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. With your voices united, we give glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest
Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came bringing food from the first fruits to Elisha, the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So Elisha repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. The servant set it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit 
in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain, sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festivals of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he gave thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, And from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Brothers and sisters, the first reading, the psalm, and the gospel all speak of food, feeding, and nourishment. In Hebrew times, the prophet Elisha fed a hundred people with 20 barley loaves. Then a thousand years after, Jesus fed 5,000 people with five loaves. The mystery is why another 2,000 years after Jesus, that problem still exists today. Some people 
have enough food, many don't have enough, and many are dying from starvation every day. Some time ago, I read on the internet that apparently the average person blinks his eyes from 15 to 20 times per minute. I did not check it out, I took it literally. But that's an interesting bit of trivia. But I also read at the same time that about 15 to 20 people die every minute of starvation. Imagine what that means. That every time that you and I blink our eyes, a person dies of starvation in the world. Blinking our eyes is just an automatic reflex. You and I don't have to be concerned over it. It just happens. So what's the big deal? Unfortunately, the same attitude is the same attitude that some people have about the world starving people. What's the big deal? Sometimes we are too far removed from the hungry to really identify with their plight. Few of us have ever gone to bed hungry, wondering if we would have as much as a rice bowl to eat the next day. Most of our biggest worry is not whether we will eat or not. It is but it is when, what, and how we will eat. Today, because of the media, internet, and so forth, we have instant knowledge of all kinds of tragedies that happen at the same time in every corner of the world. So often, we have awareness of the problem, but we don't necessarily have engagement with the problem. Engagement means involvement, interaction, and being really present to the problem. I believe something similar has happened with the issue of residential schools in Canada. The first news of the 215 young bodies buried under the residential school in Kamloops came out last spring. It was a stark reminder of the horrific reality of innocent lives being lost and also the tragedy suffered by their parents and their families. We were always aware that we did not treat well the people of the First Nation, the Mitis and the Inuit. But the awareness that we had somehow never really brought us to engagement interaction. The beginning of any reconciliation with the First Nation involves listening to them to become aware of their suffering. As Christians, it is not enough to hear about it. To hear about the suffering, we must come to feel it. Hearing about the suffering of the First Nations is a beginning, absolutely a beginning but it is not enough. We must come to feel it. Then after we feel it, then we can get engaged, then we can start on the road to truth and reconciliation. We need awareness, but awareness that brings us to interaction and brings us to engagement. Most of us are aware and feel sorry about the number of people that die from starvation. But are we really engaged in doing something about it? What more can we do concretely? Father Ron Roll Iser, I don't know if I pronounce his name correct, but that's okay, he's not here. A member of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, a very well known and distinguished spiritual writer says there are two approaches to the question of starvation in the world. First, he talks of the Mother Teresa approach. For her, Jesus' command 
It's very simple, very clear. Each of us should personally reach out concretely and touch the life of some poor people. There are times when we are literally taking food to the hungry people, working in soup kitchens, giving aid to individual poor people. This approach is personal, individual, and concrete. But Father Rolizer also speaks of a second approach, which is maybe more abstract. He says that it is time to change the social, political, and economic structures that are responsible for keeping a lot of people in poverty and being hungry. That approach is less personal, less individual, it might be slower, but in the long run, it has a far more reaching effect. By getting involved in social justice groups, people try to change the conditions that are keeping people in their situation. So which is the best approach? Our, as Christians, our task is not to pick between being Mother Teresa or being an advocate for social justice. I think the gospel inspires us to be both. To help feed the hungry people that are hungry now, but also to set up conditions where they have a possibility of getting out of their situation. There is something that each of us can do. And there's a lot that people do. But there's always more than we can do. A mother was preparing pancakes for her two sons, Kevin, age six, and Ryan, age four. The boys began to argue who would get the first pancake. And so the mother saw the opportunity to give them a lesson. So she said to the boys, if uh, Jesus were sitting here, he would say, let my brother have the first pancake. I can wait. Right away, Kevin turns to his younger brother and says, okay, Ryan, you be Jesus. Sometimes we are exactly like Kevin. We say that parishioner should take care of that. That committee should get involved. Those people should look after the poor and the hungry. No, we should be like Jesus, doing all we can. Of course, according to our abilities, our gifts, and our skills. We know the usual steps that we can take, and many of you do those steps already. We can donate funding. We can work in a local food shelter. We can call our elected representatives to press for more care and for housing for the poor. Uh, we can find out what our parish does, our town, and get involved. Just one simple example. You and I could take the money we spend on a coffee drink each day of the month. And at the end of the month, give that amount to a community food bank. And that amount could make quite a difference for a struggling family. We know, and we have to, close, feed, house ourselves and our families. That's a necessity. But also, we have to find a balance where we don't keep everything to ourselves but from there, we share with other people. Also, let us not forget to give thanks at each Mass for the food of the body and blood of Christ that we receive. And millions of people don't know about this food. And here again, we must ask ourselves, what are we doing to share the Word of God? What are we doing to invite people to the table of the Lord? Let us not hesitate to give what we can. Because even with our little poor offerings, God can do wonders with that, as he did 
with the offerings of the little boy in the gospel. Amen. If you will please stand for the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the needs of this community and the world. For the church, for Pope Francis, and for all of us as we strive to be a Eucharistic people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve the poor, who feed the hungry, for all staff and volunteers in the soup kitchens of Greater Moncton, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who work in health care and for those who visit and pray with the sick as they seek to bear with one another in gentleness, love, humility, and patience, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of residential schools, and for all who have been harmed in any way by people they trusted. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For good health and safety for people traveling this summer. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, including Christine Granati, mother of Arlen Granati, Buzz Betts, June Robichaud, Bill Stafford, Janice Robichaud, Vic LeBlanc, Lillian Buzzle, Marie Brideau Land, and Sheldon Phaneuf Sr. And for those who have died, including Roger Poirier, brother of Letha LeBlanc, Timothy Rossiter, Ron Robichaud, Jerry Bushel, brother of Mike Bushel, and Basil Thibodeau. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Instead of the usual prayer for conclusion for the general intercessions, I would like to to say the prayer that the Vatican has prepared for grandparents and the elderly. And that prayer is to be recited by grandparents and the elders. I don't fit in the category of the grandparents, but I do fit in the category of the elders. So I will say this prayer and make it mine and hope that it will be yours also. I thank you, Lord, for the comfort of your presence, even in times of loneliness. You are my hope and my confidence. You have been my rock and my fortress since my youth. I thank you for having given me a family and for having blessed me with a long life. I thank you for moments of joy and difficulty, for the dreams that have already come true in my life, and for those who are still ahead of me. I thank you for this time of renewed fruitfulness to which you call me 
Increase, O Lord, my faith. Make me a channel of your peace. Teach me to embrace those who suffer more than me, to never stop dreaming, and to tell of your wonders to new generations. Protect and guide Pope Francis and the Church that the light of the gospel might reach the ends of the earth. Send your spirit, O Lord, to renew the world, that the storm of the pandemic might be calmed, the poor consoled, and wars ended. Sustain me in weakness. Help me to live life to the full in each moment that you give me, in the certainty that you are with me every day until the end of age. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending debt 
and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and as without end, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his dead and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, spread throughout the world and bring her into the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, the bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co years to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is Let Us Be Bread, found on page 46 of your parish hymnal.
as God has loved me, so I have loved you. Go and live on in my love. Let us be bred, blessed by the Lord, broken and shared, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us be one in the Lord. I am the bread of life, broken. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ uh, our Lord. Before I give the final blessing, I would like to thank you all for your prayer and uh, participation. Also, it's been a year and a half with COVID-19 has been very difficult. I want to thank all the volunteers, all the people that have worked to keep the churches safe. Uh, many of you have drawn extra time to be able to ensure that at least a part of the community can come to the Mass uh, every Sunday. So thank you for all that work and all that volunteering. I want to thank also all the people that volunteer in the different services of liturgy, singing, reading, welcoming. Those are all very central parts. And in this parish, you have a wonderful liturgy, so I want to thank you. This week, I will be in touch with the other bishops of New Brunswick and to find out exactly what the rules will be starting next weekend. I know restrictions will be lifted off but there are decisions to be made concerning the sign of peace, concerning the communion to the cup, different things like that. We will have to discuss and see uh, if we should restrain a little bit longer. We'll see. I'll talk with both the three other bishops of New Brunswick this week, and I'll send out notes to the parishes uh, either Tuesday or uh, Wednesday. I wish you all a good Sunday. Have all a good weekend. Enjoy the nice weather that we have. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to, to God. God. Our hymn is found on page 514 of your Catholic Book of Worship, and we'll sing verse 1 and 3. Stop.
on. 